Rarely do we get to hear Jesus talked about as a type of organizer or a protester. A lot of us never get to hear Jesus talked about like that. But today is Palm Sunday, so I think it's the perfect opportunity. In the Christian calendar, Palm Sunday begins Holy Week, the last week of Lent, and Palm Sunday recognizes this event that's now commonly called the Triumphal Entry into Jerusalem, where Jesus is on the donkey and goes in through the entrance in Jerusalem, and people are waving palm branches and singing Hosanna. It's a very short story. You can take time to read a bit of it now in Mark or any of the other Gospels, because all four Gospels mention it too, which is important. And when you're reading the Bible, there's often these footnotes at the bottom that can explain or give more context on certain words or phrases that are completely out of our context and only make sense within their context. As they're writing, they're not writing it for 21st century Americans. They're writing it for their community that would have had an understanding of the context already. But there's a political context to all these stories as well. So in this video, I just want to give a kind of political footnote to this Palm Sunday story. And I wrote this book, The God Who Riots, Taking Back the Radical Jesus, came out on Broadleaf Books last year. So I love talking about this stuff. And in the chapter, A Riot at the Temple, I talk way more about this story. So if you want to get even deeper than this video, then check this book out. I grew up a Christian, but as I've grown as a person and in my faith and become more passionate about understanding my faith and its history, historical context that it came from, my view of Jesus has just felt like it's widened more and more and more and more. But growing up, I had a very reductive, narrow view of Jesus that was handed to me, where Jesus was just this very alien-like supernatural wizard almost. Like he was just so non-human, like almost floating around and this beautiful white robe, almost glowing perhaps. And the point was always made about how different Jesus was from us. And that very narrow view of Jesus then gets projected onto the gospel stories. And when we only have that small lens of Jesus, we can miss so much of the humanness of Jesus that is revealed in these stories. And the reason the humanness of Jesus is so important is because we're human. And Jesus gathered disciples telling them the whole way, do what I do so we can do what he does. A human following what a human did in a human way. I would argue that's what Christianity is actually all about. Not just having the right belief in your heart about a really powerful guy 2,000 years ago so you could go somewhere cool after you die. And so growing up, I often heard this Palm Sunday described as like Jesus, this supernatural God-man, pulled up to the entrance of Jerusalem and used his superpower of omniscience to determine where the donkey could be in the town and it's like he saw it and was like, go over there and get that donkey, bring it to me. And then once he got the donkey, he rode into town. And because Jesus is just so magnetic, a crowd organically appeared around him. And because his presence is just so overwhelmingly glorious, they all just started praising him and worshiping him and bringing out palm branches that they just happened to carry around for occasions like this and waving them and, and worshiping him because he's the freaking son of God. And to add to the miraculous character of this story, this scene is also a fulfillment of Zechariah's prediction of the future 500 years before. In Zechariah 9.9, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And Matthew's account actually even directly quotes this verse. And then the crescendo of the sermon would be something like, so therefore Jesus is God and you have no choice to believe that Jesus is God now because I just proved to you that Jesus is God because he fulfilled this future prediction. So convert now or else you'll go to hell. And maybe that hell bit would be saved for the sermon next Sunday when they come back. But it was very much about this is proof that Jesus is God, and that's the point of the story. But let's look at this story with fresh eyes, and instead of assuming the godness of Jesus and projecting that onto the story, let's take a moment to just assume the humanness of Jesus to see what else we can notice that we may be missing. Because then I think it starts to make a lot more sense. We have to consider, maybe this was actually a carefully organized demonstration, purposely timed and planned out long before this scene. All the Jewish males from the regions surrounding Jerusalem would have traveled to Jerusalem for this week celebrating Passover, which was celebrating the Jews' exodus from 
Egypt. And not only was word of Jesus's ministry traveling around the different cities and different regions, but also would have traveled around to Jerusalem by that point. And so there must have been a conversation, some sort of communication between Jesus and the disciples at Jerusalem about planning this demonstration. And so picture this now. Someone in Jerusalem was assigned to tie the donkey at a specific spot and told Jesus where it would be. Or they told Jesus where a donkey would have already been tied. And so Jesus knew, okay, according to the plan, the donkey's gonna be there, go in and get it and bring it to me. Which actually makes a lot more sense than Jesus using his omniscience to predict where something would be, because he never does that before this scene. He's not, okay, put your card under the cup, ace of spades. Like he's never doing that. It would be weird if he just suddenly did it in this one little scene. And for a crowd to already be there, they had to have been told a time and a place to show up and wait for the demonstration to start. Imagine a crowd waiting there, feeling how hot it's getting, wondering why Jesus is taking so long. Imagine Jesus outside of the entrance waiting, waiting for the donkey to get there, wondering if that part of the plan worked out, and then getting the donkey and perhaps waiting some more for the crowd to be ready. And then they had to have been told to bring the palm branches or perhaps someone handed them out almost like picket signs making sure that most of them had one and then they sing praises and wave the palm branches as Jesus is going through the crowd on a donkey just like Zechariah describes but here's something we also often don't think about Jesus and everyone there as good Jews would have been very familiar with Zechariah and let's take a moment to consider, instead of looking at this story as them fulfilling something that Zechariah predicted would happen in the future, look at it as the fact that these people know Zechariah well, and they know the rest of the Hebrew prophets and the Torah well. And so they are reenacting something that they know from Zechariah. Because Zechariah, what he was talking about, was actually in reference to what he was experiencing within his context. And they, in their context, under the oppression of the Roman Empire now, felt the need for a Messiah the way that Zechariah felt the need for a Messiah. And when I say Messiah, I mean a need for someone to save them from oppression from the Roman Empire. And so, with this knowledge in mind, they reenact something that they all know and remember from Zechariah that is always on their mind as they're crying out for liberation. And Jesus throughout the Gospels, is constantly quoting the prophets and even reenacting some of their miracles, especially Elisha. Jesus reenacts a lot of Elisha's miracles and quotes others. But we have to understand Jesus was never trying to start his own religion. He was a good Jew and died a good Jew. And he intentionally saw himself as a part of this long line of Hebrew prophets. And this isn't to say, well, everything Jesus said, the prophet said before him, so it doesn't matter. I'm saying this helps us get a fuller picture of Jesus when we understand that he is intentionally aligning himself with the Hebrew prophets instead of this vision of Jesus as someone just doing his thing and just so happened to fulfill some of the things that the prophet said and just so happened to say some of the things that the prophet said. The prophets were talking about what was happening in their time and Jesus was inspired by them and therefore said some of the things the prophet said and did some of the things that the prophets talked about. And understanding that doesn't put Jesus down, it widens our picture of Jesus. So why this type of demonstration in this exact place in this exact time? Now let's get into some of the more political context here that wouldn't have been mentioned because the readers would have already gotten it. We know from the Jewish historian Josephus that at the beginning of every Passover week, Pontius Pilate and a legion of Roman soldiers entered into Jerusalem and stayed by the temple for the whole week because they knew there was an increased chance of an uprising as Jews gathered together and recounted and celebrated the time that they were freed from another empire, Egypt. So during Passover week, they would increase military presence to try to avoid anyone getting any dangerous ideas. So it was totally possible that they timed this demonstration happen around the same time that Pontius Pilate is entering. So from the east entrance, Jesus is entering humbly on a donkey surrounded by peasants. And from the west entrance, Pontius Pilate is entering on a chariot led by a war horse surrounded by soldiers. And this also connects with the next verse in Zechariah 9, which says, He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. In the book The Last Week by John Dominic Crossan and Marcus Borg, which is also a great book to read, 
as we enter Holy Week. They say what we often call Jesus's triumphal entry was actually an anti-imperial, anti-triumphal one. A deliberate lampoon of the conquering emperor entering a city on horseback through gates open in abject submission. This demonstration exposed two warring kingdoms, the kingdom of Rome with the power and the weapons on their side, and the kingdom of God with the people on their side, desperate for liberation and for peace. And this begins Jesus' week in Jerusalem that would ultimately lead to him being arrested and executed. And he spends this week doing other demonstrations that I want to talk about in more videos that we'll put out this week. But like I said, I also talk a whole lot about it in a lot more detail in this book, The God Who Riots. So subscribe and keep an eye out for more videos this week and get this book. But I want us to see this human Jesus like us who sees the injustice going on in his world and participates in this demonstration and protest to criticize the people in power who are causing the injustice. And with this vision of Jesus, I see today's protests, protests against police brutality, protests against anti-trans bills that are being introduced and implemented, protests against gun violence. And I see all that and think that's where God is. And this isn't me just doing the whole thing that the He Gets Us campaign was doing. Or it's like, yeah, everything you're going through, Jesus went through too. So therefore, convert to Christianity and find a church. I'm saying, yeah, Jesus went through what we went through and struggled for justice the way we are struggling for justice. And so as we struggle for justice, know that God is on our side. Because I believe God is always on the side of the oppressed. And I also believe throughout the whole Bible, it's revealed that God is on the side of the oppressed. And not even in a like aesthetic allyship, I support you type of way, but God is on the side of the oppressed as they struggle for liberation and empowers us to struggle for liberation. And Jesus and his disciples understood that struggle for liberation in their day, and Jesus chose to be on the side of the oppressed and lead and participate in these demonstrations, starting with this one that we celebrate on Palm Sunday. So today, remember that Jesus and let that Jesus inspire you. So share this video with somebody and keep an eye out for more videos this week. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can become a patron, patreon.com slash Damon Garcia. Thank you to all my supporters already over there. It really helps a lot. And I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.